So let's talk about some trig functions. We're going to start with some basic angles. I'll show you how to use reference angles to find out trig functions of any angle you ever you're come across. Uh, we'll talk about some graphing of some trig functions, which is going to be kind of interesting. You'll see why they are the way they are, and that should be our day. So the first thing we're going to start with, just a little bit of talk about angles. Now when we say an angle, typically we mean an angle in reference to the, the x-axis. And we got a couple names for these things. Our angle would be given here, I like to call it theta. Typically, if we're going to start here, this would be called our initial side. What do they call the, the side where the angle ends? Terminal. Yeah, it's the terminal side, of course. You ever see the movie The Terminal? Has nothing to do with angles, but it's a pretty good movie. You should check it out. Anyway, uh, now, now if we're going to start the x-axis and go counterclockwise, wh which is the, the positive angle measurement? Clockwise or counterclockwise? So going this way, counterclockwise gives us positive angles. If we go this way, our, counter our clockwise, that gives us our negative angles. So counterclockwise rotation gives us our positive angles. Converse, we have clockwise giving us our negative angle measurements. Now, when we measure angles, there's typically two two constructs for measuring angles. We, we either do Degrees or we do radians. Let's talk a little bit about radians versus degrees. Where do they come from? Why, why we have them? Radians are kind of interesting. They involve that number pi, which really is a weird number in and of itself, right? I mean, it doesn't end. It doesn't repeat. It's it's the an irrational actually. Um, yeah, irrational number. It, it's it's kind of strange, and it, it's also the relationship between the diameter and the circumference of a circle, and that's that's why we want to incorporate that and deal with angles because we, we have parts of circles in that. Then we have this degree <coughs> system that we also have. Uh, that, that most of the time, that's how we describe angles to each other, right? At least here, we say, if I say, okay, can you draw me an angle of 60 degrees? You have no problem with that, typically. Say, so draw me an angle of 3 pi over 14. You go, what? That's crazy. You seriously gonna draw? Well, you, you can. I mean, you can draw that, but you don't have that in our in our heads. So normally, we like to have ways to convert between them, just so we're kind of familiar with them. Can use both of our angle measurements. Um, if, if you're not familiar with this, how our radians and our degrees are are connected is with this equation: two pi radians equals. 360 degrees. The reason why we say they're equal, those are both the way you can represent a circle. So this represents all the measurements degree-wise of a circle, and so does this for radians of a circle. Therefore, they have to be exactly the same. What this gives us, if we do just a little bit of mathematics, if we solve for radians or we solve for degrees, so we can even write like this, degrees, it's going to give us a method on how to convert between radians to degrees. So, for instance, if we uh, want to solve for, for degrees, well, we can divide by 360, and that's going to tell us that to change from radians to degrees, we're going to be multiplying by pi over 360. And that, that, that works just fine. So, here's our, our note to convert. If you want to go from degrees to radians, Go from degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. 
multiplied by pi over 180. What that's going to do is get rid of your degrees and introduce to you that, that pi. That's going to change into radians for you. Uh, the other way, if we want to go from radians to degrees, well, multiply by, what do you think? Yeah, really, you're just multiplying by 1 in a, in a special way. And if you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get pi radians equals 180 degrees. So you're just using that equality uh, to change between our degrees and radians. Would you like to try a couple examples to get your heads wrapped around this? All right, let's change uh, We'll just do two examples really quick. Let's change 200 degrees into radians, and we'll change uh, negative 3 pi over 4 radians into degrees. So 200 degrees. If I want to change 200 degrees into radians, well, I'm already in the degree measurement. I want to get rid of the degrees and introduce the radians. So here I'm going to take my 200 degrees. Sure, in order to get rid of those units degrees, you can't have degrees on the top. That's going to be degrees squared, right? That, that'd, be, that'd be ridiculous. What we want to do is have our degrees on the denominator of that fraction, and that kind of tells you where you, which one of these, if you, if you forget all this, which one of these equalities to use, which one of these conversions. If you're trying to get rid of degrees, have degrees on the denominator. Then your pi is going to be on the numerator, and you'll see that the degree units, those are gone. You can cancel them out just like you would any other variable or, or, or amount. Can you reduce that? Sure, go ahead and, and do that. You've got calculators. If you want to punch in the fraction, just press enter. What is this going to give us? How much? 10 pi over 9. 10 pi over 9. Okay. 10 pi over 9 radians. So right there we know that 200 degrees and 10 pi over 9 radians is exactly the same measure of a certain angle. What other angle did I tell you we were going to convert? Negative 3 pi over 4. Oh, good. I actually made that off the top of my head, so it's good to remember that. So negative 3 pi over 4, well, it's in radians. We want to convert this to degrees, which means we want to introduce the degree measurement. What, what that typically says is, well, we want to get rid of a pi somewhere. So I'm thinking the pi is going to have to be on the denominator of my fraction. And if I want degrees at the end of my problem, I'm going to have 180 degrees on the numerator of my fraction. Does anything simplify out of this? Sure, 4 goes into 180 how many times? Okay. And what, anything else? Pi. Oh, the pies are gone. That's great. Can you do the math? Tell me what we're going to get. How many degrees? <coughs> 135. 135? Negative. 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 Okay. Sure. Would this angle be measured uh, counterclockwise or clockwise? Could you find the same angle by measuring some distance counterclockwise? Yeah, angles are strange like that, right? You can go negative or positive and somehow end with the same exact, well, at least, reference point. Not same angle, same reference point on that circle. Kind of cool. By the way, speaking of graphing, let's go, let's go ahead and go over just a little bit how to graph these appropriately. So if I were to give you, let's try 4 pi over 3. Can you graph that on a circle or on an x-y axis? Yes, no. <coughs> uh -huh. You can. Can you? I can. Yeah. Can you? How do you do it? How do you do it? You know one full circle is too high. You do. So I know that this is, this is actually pi, and this is 0 or 2 pi. Well, this has got to be pi over 2, and this has got to be 3 pi over 2. Here's the way I always like to graph these things. What I like to do is break up each section of pi into whatever denominator I have. That's the way I think is easiest for me. So I think, OK, if this is 1 pi, I'm counting pi being divided by 3. You see, you can split this up and say, OK, this is 4 
times pi over 3. So what I want to do is find out where the pi over 3 sections are, count four of them, and I'm going to have my angle. Does that make sense to you? Are we awake today? Yeah. I know it's Friday, right? You're like, oh, just, just 47 more minutes, please. Or 37 more minutes, please. But stick with me here, folks. This is good stuff. This is trigonometry, right? I mean, some of you, trust me, you need a refresher on this. Believe me. So if I want to break this up in my pi over 3s, I think, okay, well, here's... I split it like that. Here's one, two, three sections of equal value inside of my pi. Does that make sense? Let's do the same thing down here. So basically, we've broken up each pi into three parts, or each two pi, each circle, into six parts. How many are we going to count? Four. We want four pi's over three. So one, two, three. Our angle is going to end right there. You feel okay with that so far? You sure? Now, if I ask you to graph negative 2 pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3, we'd start at the same initial side, but we're not going counterclockwise anymore, we're going clockwise. Where's it going to end? You still break it up into three parts, right? Every, every pi would be broken up into three parts. If we're counting negative 2, that means we're going to start here. One, two, let's call this uh, four pi over three. This would be our two pi, over, negative two pi over three. Whenever you have that situation where one angle and a different angle go in the opposite direction and on the same exact uh, terminal side, they're called coterminal. It just means there's multiple ways to measure the same terminal side. I could have gone around like 50 times, right, and then ended right there. It's going to be the same exact ultimate ending spot. How about we graph, let's graph two more. Let's graph 5 pi. Then we'll graph, uh, these are a little bit easier, negative 7 pi over 2. <coughs> so 5 pi, of course we're going to start with our, our typical initial side, that's our 0 angle or 2 pi angle marker. We've got pi here, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Why don't you try the 5 pi? Start at your initial side. Are you going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Why counterclockwise? Okay, so go ahead and do that. Count however many pi's you have right now. Now, we don't have to break this up at all because well, there's no denominator, so we're actually counting 5 pi's. Let's go ahead and do that. How many times around am I going to go? Okay, so I'm going to start here and go, well, here's, here's one pi, two pi. That's a full circle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Three pi, four pi, you getting dizzy yet? <laughs> and then one more, that's going to give us a five pi. Five 